Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are all welcome to my YouTube channel. And today we are going to look at the cocktail on isothermal process. So what is an isothermal process? An isothermal process is a thermodynamic process whose temperature remains constant. And during this isothermal process, usually there is an exchange of heat between the system and the surrounding. So usually in isothermal process, temperature is constant. The temperature T remains always constant. But there is an exchange of heat. There is an exchange of heat between the system and the surrounding. So heat exchange between system and surrounding at constant temperature. That is what you call an isothermal process. And of course, the rate at which heat is exchanged is so slow that the system attains thermal equilibrium at every step. So in some process, the system exchange heat with a reservoir thus maintaining the thermal equilibrium at the latest temperatures. So it means that, ladies and gentlemen, a simpler way when we are talking about isothermal process is a process in which the temperature is constant and there is an extent of heat between the system and the surrounding. And more and more or so, or moreover, the system is very, very slow. So at each and every step, at, at each and every step, the exchange is very slow and that the system sometimes may even attend a thermal equilibrium at each and every step. So that is an isothermal process. So isothermal process is a system where the temperature is constant and there is an exchange of heat between the system and the surrounding. And then the next thing is uh, the isothermal process and the first law of thermodynamics. Remember that in the first law of thermodynamics, the first law of thermodynamics said that the uh, energy can neither be created nor destroyed during the uh, chemical process or during uh, the rates or during the chemical reaction. So a first law of thermodynamics is usually relates or to a relationship between the internal energy and the internal energy. And of course, the internal energy is delta U. The internal energy is delta U is equal to Q minus the below. But we should remember that during the isothermal process, during the isothermal process, the temperature is constant. During the isothermal process, the temperature is constant. So since the temperature is constant, and of course the internal energy is a function temperature. So therefore the temperature is constant. So therefore the internal energy is going to be zero. So therefore at the end, we are going to have the value is equal to Q. That is this. So during expansion, because in the isothermal process, in the isothermal process, the internal energy become zero. So therefore the value is equal to Q. That is during an expansion. But during compression, the value is equal to minus Q. So expansion in the expansion, the value is equal to Q. While in the compression, the value is equal to minus Q. So now the next thing is uh, the isothermal process work done. So remember if V is equal to constant. So therefore the work done is now equals to NRT lin lin of form bracket final volume all over initial volume or it can be exchanged to W is equal to NRT lin P1 over P2. The P1 stands for initial fracture, P2 stands for the final fracture, while VF stands for the final volume, and then VI stands for the initial volume. So W is equal to 
than RTW. But you can have a situation where the link can change to lock. So whenever we remove lock, we have a constant value, which is 2.303. But it's soon for you. So whenever you have your change in volume or your ratio of volume, then you can just press your link and get your answer. So now let's look at example three. We now have three moles of mono atomic gas at a room temperature, sorry, at a temperature of 27 degrees centigrade, expand isothermally from an initial volume of 20.0 meter cube to a new volume of 40.0 meter cube. Then what is the work done by the gas? So the next, the first thing that we are going to do is to give, is to actually drive the data from the question. So our initial volume is 20 meter cube, while our final volume is 40 meter cube. And then we have the temperature in 27 degrees centigrade. Then we now convert it to Kelvin by adding the temperature with 273. And that is how we arrive at 300 K. That is Kelvin, and then we have the number of moles is 3, so N is equal to 3. Then we now have the R, which is the universal gas constant, is equal to 8.314 Joule per mole for Kelvin. So therefore now the work done is equal to, we now use this formula which says that V U is equal to NRT lin VF all over VL. So therefore we now have that will is equal to so the number of mole is three mole times r is 8.314 then times the temperature which is 300 then times lin 40 divided by 20. so therefore at the end we are going to have that will is equal to 51862 or 5.186 kilo joule so because in this case, the work done is expand, is under expansion. So that is why our work done is positive. But if it is under compression, it means that the work done is going to be negative. So now another example, calculate the work done when one mole of a gas is expand reversibly and isothermally from 5 atm to 1 atm at 25 degrees centigrade. So this one is also simple. So remember, I told you if we are going to substitute the lean with long with lock, we are going to introduce a constant value, and the constant value is minus two point three zero three n r t log p one over p two. But you can still leave it as a lean by saying that by saying that the value. value it is equal to uh, n r t lin p1 over p2 you can still work with this so but at the end since we are now so we, since we are now changing the lin with log so we have to introduce this constant value which is minus 2.303 and rt log p1 over p2 so therefore we have now minus uh 2.30 times so the number of mole here is one so that is why we have one here times the temperature is 25 degrees centigrade so we have to add it with 273 that is how we have 298 and of course we have r which is our constant h 0.314 times log so the uh P1 is 5, so we have 5 divided by the uh, divided by the P2, which is 1. So we have 1 over 5. That is how we now arrive at minus 3988 joule or minus 3.988 kilojoule. So this is two examples on how to calculate the work done on expansion under isothermal condition. So you can also have a diabetic situation. So in the adiabatic situation, there is no exchange between heat and the surroundings. So it's like an, you have an insulator. 
So heat is not exchanging between the system and the surrounding. And of course, we have the integral work. So the integral work, don't remember, work done is equal to uh, pressure times volume. So we have pressure times dV. So at this case, we now have integral of V dV under the constraint of adiabatic condition. So therefore, we have PB gamma is equal to constant. So the constant is k. So therefore, we now have the equation will now become Davilu k constant integral of final volume, initial volume, then dv over v power gamma. And after integrating, then we are now going to have Davilu is equal to k of one bracket final volume one minus a uh, rest of our one minus gamma minus initial volume one minus gamma all over one minus gamma so under a diabetic condition and of course the gamma is cv over cv so we can actually use this formula to also do some calculation in relation to the work done under a diabetic condition so ladies and gentlemen if this is the first time you are coming to my youtube channel please subscribe thank you